everyone welcome to another week in our garden now this morning it's very windy as you can hear the wind going through the trees at the back of me and this side so I do apologize for the wind noise there's not a lot I can do today but then again it's not a lot of wind to what some people have had now it's a lovely warm morning 20 degrees believe it or not so we're really it's really really warm autumn it's really what you call the Indian summer so two weeks ago we had two or three white over frosts and now we have sunshine and rather a lot of wind I'm on plot A and I'm going to divide plot A into four this will make it easier for looking after the crops and getting between especially in the winter where I'll have footpaths where I can get on instead of having long rows now the other good thing about dividing it up I can concentrate more on preparation for each crop that we put on plot A. Plot A is basically the onion, the leeks, the beans, the peas, but I can divide those up and really prepare the soil for that specific crop. Now the one, the quadrant if you like, that I'm actually digging now, I'm double digging, I'm manuring the bottom layer and the top layer because I know this will be the onion bed. So the really heavy feeders and they have deep roots so I really want to get lots of manure and compost in there. What I'm actually doing I'm putting manure in the bottom spit and compost in the top but I'll show you as we do it. Now uh, because I've divided into four I haven't got such a long stretch to dig and actually the gladiolas are in the way but we'll leave those. Now I've dug the, the muck into the bottom as you can see it's good and deep and now what I'm going to do this will be the end of the bed there then the path so I need to dig that over and then turn to go back that way so we start Let's put the fork in and give it a good wobble, that'll make us a good edge to work to. And then that way, so about there look, push that in, give it a good wobble. Because the compost from the compost bins is on top, and I've put some chopped straw on top as well, just to make it easier and cleaner to walk on, but it also does the soil good as well. Because this is on top, I'm going to take it off in small bites and mix it as I move it forward. So instead of going halfway, I'm going just a little bit, look, and then turn it. You see? Just keep mixing it as we go. late digging this year because I couldn't get in the soil because it was too hard it's just workable now so I can get on and then keep going I'll do this one then I'll finish there you are the compost from the bins is on top so I need to mix it as I turn it Nice straight edge. Right, I'll just finish to there and then I'll come back. Right, I've turned the soil over to the end, squared it up and now I change to the shovel and take the crumbs out. What to do now, all these crumbs in here, I turn up onto the garden, make it nice and, nice and level. The uh, thing is not to go too deep else you bring the, in this case you'll bring the clay up so just deep enough to get the topsoil off uh, 
Make it nice and level. Now I've levelled the bottom of the trench off, got all the crumbs out that I need to get out. Remember, don't go too deep, you'll bring the subsoil up. I'm going to put some manure in and dig that into that bottom spit. Right, it, it looks fresh manure but it's actually a few months old now so it's ideal for digging into that bottom as you can see it's starting to rot down pretty good spread it out and now we start again digging it in go deep and then spin it out We don't want this bit there, but let's put that a bit like that. Now this is about the third or fourth time I've actually built this. There's the clay that's underneath, look now. This was at least a spit down, now it's two spits down, so that's good. If a little bit comes up, don't worry, mix it in. Turn it in, cut out for bricks. You can see that bit of clay coming up, that's fine. Right, so I'll finish this and then I'll show you the next stage. Now that is the new trench finished and some at least another fork depth of good manure dug into the bottom now we need to change direction and go backwards now okay when i started the row at that end i dug a trench and put the soil of that trench over there that's the soil from the first trench now when I finished digging this side of the plot I should put the soil that we took out the first trench into the last trench and that completes the cycle of this quadrant if you like. But we need to change direction so let's get on. Now the width of the trench I do to the width of the shovel okay which is there look and then I put a cane in each end and I know to dig that trench out I need to dig that out now and mix it into there then start all over again it's just a case of if you just put a a guideline in with your fork it doesn't have to be dead straight we know that side's broke so we'll go back there and we'll just break it Okay, now we go this side. And remember this has got good compost on top from the bin so we need to mix it. Don't take too much off. It's alright once you get it going. That's it, we we'll just break that corner. Right, the idea is, if you can, is try and fill that end first, so you're not taking it from that end to that end. Okay? So I'll, I'll finish going along here and then come back to you. There you are, 
that's the double digging actually up and turn and now I start exactly the same going all the way back and remember on the last train to put that soil back in and that's done that's finished that length there now over winter that will slowly go down as that manure in the very bottom rots and then by spring the beds level now the trench is now ready for the manure to be put in and then dug and then again turned over and progress down the plot until we get to the other end that's quite a bit of wind getting up nearly blew dying over now it's a lot of work but well worth it remember i only do one plot every year i've got the overwintering onions in some liners up at the shed ready to go in this so as soon as we get a little bit of rain or i water them we'll put those in and get them going in the ground okay. now we'll just nip round the end and go in the fruit cage and we'll show you the progress in there now outside the fruit cage as you can see now i have a door what i've done i've just put a low fence around the outside to stop the chickens getting in to destroy the the mulching they throw it everywhere and the bark that's on the path the thing while we're here is i don't know if you can see this but we've got new shoots actually growing on the blueberry totally out of season so i hope that doesn't affect next year's crop we're getting nice winter color on them and the leaves are getting ready to drop but because of the warm spell they've actually started shooting again we just have to watch it and see what happens i've managed to get the bark down on the path now and providing the chickens don't come in it'll stay there a little while now this is the grapevine we rooted out here in the soil as you can see it's rooted and it's growing very well so Stu, as soon as these leaves drop off, we'll get this packed up and get it to you. There's actually two of them for you. Oh, we, we took the runners off the new strawberries and I potted them up. And I was going to hold them and plant them in the spring, but the weather is so mild and the soil is so warm, I've decided to put them in. So this is the last five going in now. So I'm going to pop these five strawberries remember when you put strawberries in trying to put them on a bit of a mound so that the roots don't get too wet so i'm not putting them in deep at all there's plenty of manure on the bed i'm trying to mound it a little bit it's a bit hard but it'll be fine hello mate i to see us There's only five to put in, it won't take a minute. Not deep, remember, mound it up. The other thing to remember is if the chickens are in now, they, they love these leaves and they, they'd eat the lot. These are the cuttings we took from the Polly, the Ilex. They're going to go in on the perimeter of the garden, just so I can use them for winter decoration. I'm waiting for the wet weather and then we'll pop them. 
these are the cuttings we took that have rooted up and been potted now I should plant these around the garden because we like to use these as you know in the holly rings etc so rather than keep going looking for it I'll have my own stock the rosemary and the lavender cuttings that we took I shall put in the garden on where those paths go on the four cross I should put a rosemary or a lavender on each cross so it just makes it prettier and also gives us herbs to use now that's all the strawberries planted I'll give them a week or so or until we have some good rain and in the next few days I think I'll put a mulch of compost out the compost bins on similar to what we've done here these are, have been mulched now for winter and I've just that little corner to finish now I'm just breaking this mulch on it's also doing the raspberries as well we've actually got raspberries coming now. they're a bit out of season When you're mulching your strawberries, try not to get the mulch on the crowns because they will rot. Try and leave the crowns pretty free. So this is very good compost. So pleased with it. I'll do the whole of the fruit cage with the mulch before winter or after we've had some rain. It's no good mulching dry land. The other thing I've done, because it's so mild, and I had a few lettuce plants left. I popped some lettuce plants in here as well. They're just a few little German lollows, so they'll be fine. If the weather stays as mild as this, they'll be fine. Now I shall put the mulch on the whole of this end of the fruit cage, except for the blueberries, which we will put some bark and some acid compost on. Okay? Now it's getting a bit windy so I think that'll be it for now we're going to pop in and have a cup of tea. Now we've had our cup of tea, beautiful day still and while I was having a cup of tea Mark came with another load of muck from horses and brought Philippa the granddaughter so we had a nice cup of tea and chat so we're a little bit later <laughs> than we thought but we have picked, we've been down and picked now I like to call this the last pick although there is one or two things still left behind there's still some celery, there's still a few peppers there might be a few tomatoes still to come and the beetroot's still coming we might get some baby beet out of that but I'd like to think this as the last pick of the summer okay now just to show you what we have picked there's some nice celery there left the tops on they will want cutting off obviously because they'll go down quite quick there is some celery still left in we'll keep it going as long as the weather stays like it is but then again we've got celeriac that's coming along nicely now I'm still taking lettuce these are little gems and as you know I've already put some more in for this long summer so we might even get another crop the peppers have done very very well this year I'm so pleased with them and there's still one or two coming so if the sun stays out we'll get some more the tomatoes are still going I set a row late and I think we've had tomatoes for about four months now We've actually picked the green ones, we'll make some chutney with those, especially these plum shaped ones, they're very nice. So there's still one or two still to come but I think that will do for now. Now I'll just show you how I store my geraniums, saffinias, fuchsias, through the winter in my sand mix now we have to get on with it now because next week 
So I'll be filling the trough and the basket up for winter. So I really need to clear the pots and troughs out now. But I'll show you how I do it. Now the compost we use is 50-50 gritty sand and good potting compost. Mix it together well and then this is if you can see that's as damp as it's going to get all through the winter in fact that's quite wet here's the here's the geranium as it's come out of the trough or the pot that was up at the house first thing i do is i take all the flowers off i've got this to put all the rubbish in so i can get rid of it all so deflower it first if you like Take those off. It's a lovely pink nut, so we need to keep this one. And take that off. Now we couldn't store it like that, it's far too big. So what we'll do, we'll get the second tiers. I'm going to take it off just above this leaf here, that sign. And this one I'm going to take off just above that one there. And probably... I'll leave that one on but we might just take that off there as well okay just above this leaf joint here like that we're going just above that leaf joint there like that it will come off there you go and then this one just above that leaf joint there like that I'm going to have a quick look. This leaf is doing no good and won't do any good, so that can come off. Just snap them off, they'll be fine. This leaf is damaged, so that can come off. A little bit there, not doing anything, not that can come off. So that's the, the top, more or less, done. Just wiggle it with your fingers to get as much of the compost off as you can. Try not to damage the roots, though and then you stick and just tease some of this compost off look now it's already in there like a little tea bag so we'll just take what we can of that off as well that's the original what it was rooted in so this is a bought in one that we've got because we like the colour so we must keep this one. Just take as much of the compost off as you can. There you go, take that off. Keep your eye out for vine weevil grubs as well. If you see any, squash them. There's none in this one, so we're okay. Not. Right, so that's it, done. You can see how long the roots are, so we'll just shorten those a bit. There you go. And that's how we're going to overwinter it, just like that. Into the compost now. As you can see, I've pulled it up the sides a little so I can put this against the side like that. And then a little bit of compost and it's hold it. I should get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve plants in there. That's how tight they need to be. If you wish use these for taking cuttings as well quite easily done not I'll take the leaves off and then show you and then if you've got the sharp knife and cut under there that's a cutting you could take but you will need a little bottom meat this time of year okay now I've just pulled the table a little bit more into the shade under the grapevine because we're getting too many shadows on it but same again look there's the geranium that's come out of the pot and we'll just take those you'll find that other plants have gone in so you really need to get those leaves out this is another one of the bright pink that we bought in because Diane likes the pink so we'd go through it the same. First thing is just to loosen some of the compost. It just stops the roots from breaking while you're handling it. Right, here again, look, we'll go just above that node there. 
we'll go just above there and that will do that one I think so cut that off the, just pull them out that one I'm going to take off completely look and we'll leave that one if you see there's plenty more coming at the bottom so we haven't got to worry too much this leaf is no, no good look so let's take that off and we'll leave that leaf and then we'll get the little stick and start the cleaning process as much off as you can because don't want too much getting wet where the little bag's been for the rooting I'll take that off don't want that I don't know if you can hear that wind but it really is howling now but it's so warm it's a lovely day it really is a warm sunny day those trees are really taking some some wind on them I don't mind because I shall go up later on and pick the leaves up and put them in the bin now we've got that far lot so we'll just cut those off they're not going to cut with these set there it is and there's the, the little plant that we're going to overwinter same again look. we'll put that one more square going to sit it that close compost up to stop it from drying out too much until the pot's full right. now Diane's just had to knit and change the battery so I did one two three four five in there so I put six so that'll be 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So you will get about 17 plants in there. These are the trailing petunias. As you can see, it's a very pretty one. Look. Want to keep these through. They do keep through quite easy. But you have to be quite, quite severe with the cutting back on these. I find if you leave too much top, they tend to dry out very fast and if they dry out you'll lose them anyway but the same again look. we've reduced the top now we'll just clean around the root don't poke too hard just gently brush until it starts coming away there you go look. Now when we finish with these I'll just put them in that shed on the window side at the moment we've got pumpkins there but as soon as the pumpkins are free in the next week so I'll put these on that on the window side of the shed and just leave them I won't water them perhaps until after Christmas there you are look at that it's lovely now I just need to cut this long root a little bit not secretaries want sharpening actually do that there you go so that's two four six in there always make sure you've got a little bit of the sandy compost on the side before you put it if you put it just straight onto the plastic they dry out too quickly and just put that on there and then we cover it up to stop them drying out too fast while we're filling the pot okay and then as I said I'll keep going 15 16 maybe more in there geraniums exactly the same and the next time I see you I'll be able to show you all these pots full and put into that remember don't water them whatever you do keep them as dry as you dare I'll just show you a fuchsia how we do that this is an upright fuchsia because see it's quite pretty so we want to look after it and keep it for next year now remember the first thing we do is we take the flowers off we don't want the flowers on at all if you get your fuchsias too moist in the shed they will try and start flowering again that's one of the in the things you'll know that you're too wet again we'll go as low to a node as possible whether it's got leaves on or not doesn't matter okay so we'll take all those that's the dead bit there not we'll take that out node there's a node there 
this is not much crop but so let's take that off take that off there is a little green shoot there this green shoot here we'll just take that off this is not doing any good and that's no good so that's on its way look to being ready for storage now with it being hard it's come out of a, a a basket I think or a pot I just have to tease it a little bit with my fingers just to ease the card compost a bit there you go then oh, the stick was hiding now this is one that we kept through last year so we know it would be all right same again look. just keep just keep brushing the compost till it starts to come up keep your eye out for weevil I still haven't seen any, I'd like to find one so I could show you how we, what they look like. We will. You, uh, with it being one of our own this you'll find that there's quite a big root system on it so we're not going to get every little bit of this off look, there's quite a, quite a substantial root system now on it. So I think that's going to have to do for that one. I'll just set another pot up and we'll pop that in. Now these pots I'm using, these actually the bottoms are some old buckets we had, used to have for tomatoes. So the tops were cracked so I cut them in half and we we'll use them for this and they're ideal. Same again, look, this will be a fuchsia. Now that's upright so we must remember to always put uprights in this one so I need to put a label on the on it what they are now by the time we come to want them to put them in the containers for the summer most of these will be flowering anyway so we can sort the colors out then or the only thing I do keep separate are trailing and upright fuchsias now it's forecast rain all day tomorrow so I think what I'll do is I'll take lots of these plants and plenty of compost into the shed and then if it's raining all day I can get them done. It's quite a job to do but well worth it if you think what you're spending on plants every year and remember when these are potted up early spring the huge plants by then and you haven't got to wait too long to get a good display out of them. That'll be about it for this week. Hope you've enjoyed it. We've got a few jobs done. Now it's a wonderful sunny day but the wind is ferocious. It's really blowing into those trees at the front of the cottage. But I don't mind because the leaves are coming my way and I can go out and collect those up. Which we need to look at now for the leaf bin. We need to empty that next week. We'll have a look at that next week. We'll do that. Anyway, as I said, that'll be it for this week. Many, many thanks for watching. Thank you for subscribing. We do appreciate it. Now, remember next week... We're doing the baskets at the front of the house and hopefully the week after we might be popping to Gemma's to have a look at a nice Halloween display she's going to make for us. So hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye now.